by the time we get to Yeshua's day, uh, we had these versions of Judaism that were competing and clouding God's Judaism, rabbinic Judaism, uh, Pharisaic Judaism, or it wasn't really rabbinic just yet, but it's kind of it was getting there. It was it was being built up the oral traditions, uh, Talmudic Judaism, and thing all these things. And then eventually, when the temple got destroyed in 70 A.D. and Judaism kind of scattered and went into panic mode, they reconvened in a city called Yavne, which is a little north of Jerusalem. Uh, around 90 AD and begin to formulate uh, the oral traditions and put them into writing because they felt they were going to lose their way of life if they didn't really codify their beliefs, put them in writing somewhere so that they could be taught uh, to all the Jewish people who were scattered out of Jerusalem. And so we could say that rabbinic Judaism, the Judaism of the rabbis, which again is radically different from biblical Judaism, because rabbinic Judaism scrambles to put together what to do in the absence of a temple, sacrifices, priesthood, and all these things. Um, how do we serve God when we can't even get to a temple? There's nothing there. It's been destroyed. Jerusalem is it's not accessible. How do we serve God? How do we reinterpret the law of Moses? So rabbinic Judaism kind of had to alter the way they interpreted the Torah. And plus, they still had retained all of their extra biblical fences, oral traditions, things like that. And so really, what we have now today, the rabbinic Judaism that people are used to seeing is only a kind of a skeletal framework uh, re resemblance when it comes to real, true biblical Judaism. It's so radically different. It departed. And so many people don't know that. But in Jesus' day, the point I'm trying to make is that Jesus realized, Yeshua realized that what his father wanted all along was the heart of a man. We don't have to throw out the man. You know, I was using the analogy of throwing out the baby with the bathwater. We don't have to throw out the man in order to radically change him. Instead, Jesus can simply bring the truth of what God his Father was intending all along. And this is a feature that's found way back in the pages of the Torah. Circumcision of the heart. Which can only happen by faith if you allow the Word of God to penetrate and allow the Spirit of God to reveal to you who the very Son of God is in terms of the overall picture. The Son of God is the key to unlocking true obedience to God, true circumcision of the heart, right? Not just circumcision of the flesh, right? That's good, but circumcision of the heart is better. The entire theme of New Testament teaching is good versus better. The law of Moses is good, but the law of Christ is better. We don't have to go bad good like law of Moses is bad and, and law of Christ is good. Instead, we can retain the law of Moses because it was, why do we have to retain that, by the way? Why am I so adamant about keeping it and as opposed to um, discarding it like average Christians do, Christian theology? Um, uh, you know, you know, they might think, well, what good is the Old Testament anymore? I don't need it anymore. I'm not under the law anymore. Why don't I need all of those do's and don'ts and thou shalt's and thou shalt nots and all that ritual uh, listic um, observance? Why do I need all that when I have the real deal? I've got Jesus. I've got, I've got, I don't have the shadow. I've got the type. Why do I need the shadow anymore? Ah, let me answer. It's because we have to start with the premise, put your mind back into the foundational truth that the shadow was given by God. Let me pause and let that sink in. As deficient as we might think of the shadow, and it did have its built-in deficiencies, it was still given by God. The biblical system that was described by Moses from the pages of uh, Exodus through Deuteronomy, when in terms of commandments, right, Genesis being mostly narrative, that system is God's system. It wasn't made up by Moses. It wasn't made up by the people, per se, right? I know they filled in for some of the missing details, their own halacha, but the overall thrust of the Torah is God-breathed. Paul's going to tell Timothy, right, in uh, 2 Timothy 3, 15, 16, etc. You guys know those passages. All Scripture is God-breathed. It's inspired by God. It's given for reproof and correction and training and righteousness and all those things, that the man of God may be equipped. So, we can retain um, a Jewish way of life as long as we're keeping the Torah, but the key that Yeshua is going to offer is that do it with a renewed sense of um, service to God, as is driven by your faith in me as the Son of God and activated by the Spirit of God. So let's pick up my commentary right there where I'm leaving these thoughts. I say in my commentary, this accords with the words of Torah and all of the apostolic scriptures agree with and affirm it as well. 